The following is a production of CUTV Sports. check good day friends we are at the Mac here at Mercyhurst University at in Erie Pennsylvania and it's another PSAC West matchup is ready to take place here on the hardwood today hello everybody joining me is Anthony DiAgostino my name is Cody Jeanette we're delighted you could be with us here today and Anthony California in their last game at the Convocation Center had a big win over Slippery Rock that's right uh, they beat Slippery Rock 74 to 63. Mahadi and Frotz both had 20 points each. Glenn was seven for uh, nine for free throws, and it was a really emotional win for the California Vulcans that day. And as for Mercyhurst, they actually were able to partake in a non-conference uh, game for their previous win against Ursuline College. That's right. They took on Ursuline College, and Mercyhurst actually won 66 to 56. Uh, and Angel, is it Angela? Angela Heinz. Angela Heinz had 12 points off the bench, and Jessica Bell had 10 rebounds. Now, these two teams actually did square off earlier in the year back at the Convocation Center, and it was a uh, it was a home win for Cal. Uh, that's right. They uh, ended up Cal ended up winning 69 to 57, and that was November 19th. Uh, 2014. Cal had 44 second half points after trailing 31-25 at the half. Now there's going to be a couple forces to be reckoned with here on the court here today that both of the teams respectively are going to need to keep an eye on. And for California, it's it's pretty obvious that that player is the one of the players that scored 20 points against Slippery Rock, Caitlin Frotz. Yeah, Caitlin Frotz was playing out of her mind that game against Slippery Rock. She was 8 for 16, 20 points in 34 minutes versus Slippery Rock. And on the other side of the ball for Mercyhurst, Natalie Piagesi is one of those uh, players that California needs to, is a force that needs to be reckoned with. That's right. She had 10 points against Ursuline and five rebounds the last time they played Cal. She's been great the past few weeks for Mercyhurst. Yeah, she's one that can really give California a run for their money. Well, it's a PSAC West matchup here at the MAC in Mercyhurst University. What does the story have to tell? Only time will be able to tell the story. Tip off is next here on CUTV. NCA Division II has much to cheer about. As nearly 100,000 student athletes compete with passion and pride. And I'm pleased to share the best news of all. Student athletes are outperforming the rest of the D2 student body in graduation rates. Just another reason why you'll hear us say with pride, I chose Division II. Learn more at d2sa.org. With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. It's a great day for basketball here at the MAC at Mercyhurst University up in Erie, Pennsylvania. The California Vulcans are in town to take on the hometown Mercyhurst Lakers. Hello again, once again, everybody. My name is Cody Jeanette, and joining me is Anthony D'Agostino. We will have the call for you today. Let's take a look at our tale of the tape, Anthony. And that's right. And the first thing that I see right away is points per game. California was 73.1 points per game, where Mercyhurst only has 65.7. Uh, California's doing a great job on offense. And another thing, uh, rebounds. California has 37.8 rebounds, whereas Mercyhurst only has 34.9. Uh, 
And if California is looking to win today, they got to get those offensive and defensive rebounds that they're doing so, uh, so well on. And one other thing that's really sticking out to me, Anthony, is the steal differential. California almost with 12 steals per game on average, but they're down in terms of total turnovers to Mercyhurst. So Mercyhurst uh, just able to pounce on the loose basketballs more often than California is. But California is really a dominant presence in those passing lanes and can really uh, take, take the pass when it's up for the grabbing. That's right. And those steals are really important. They're a really good defensive basketball team. And when they get those steals, they're able to get down the court and get the points. Real quickly, we're going to run our starting lineups by you, starting, of course, with the visiting California Vulcans. We have number two, Emma Mahati. Number 11, Caitlin Fratz. Number 12, Lana Doran. Number 21, Mickey Glenn. And number 22, Arena Kukul. For the hometown Mercyhurst Lakers, number 11, Adrian Clocker. Number 12, Natalie Pia Jesse. Number 22, Alex Artis. Number 23, Mariah Penasino. And number 33, Jessica Bell. California will be in their home, or I beg your pardon, road, red jerseys and red shorts with the white trim. And Mercyhurst will be in their home white jerseys with white shorts and green trim. It looks like California will be shooting from left to right on your TV screen, and Mercyhurst will be shooting from the right to the left. Arena Kukul is at center court, ready to take the, take the opening tip. Mercyhurst is just taking the floor now. We'll see who it is that's going to be opposing her. And it looks like it's going to be number 12, Natalie Pia Jesse, our player to watch. So Pia Jesse versus Kukul for the opening tip. 20 fresh minutes on the clock. Kukul had to be told to step back a little bit. And here it goes. California wins it, and Mickey Glenn will bring it up the court. Glenn over on the near side, sends it swinging over to Mahati. Mahati with it over on the far side, looking for a lane but can't find much of anything. She comes back out to the point near the free throw line, sends it far over to Kukul. Kukul with a layup, no good. The rebound comes to Mercyhurst. And Mercer is doing a great job getting the rebound on that one. Really important to start rebounding early. So Penasino with it. Sends it far side to Artis. Artis still beyond the three-point arc. Gives it back to Clocker, but Clocker had the pass interfered with by Kukul, and it goes flying out of bounds. Yeah, just hit off of Kukul's uh, body on that one. She was able to get in the way of the pass. So Clocker will be taking it out. She's looking for some help. And here comes another pass stolen away by Kukul. Kukul with it now. The teams all file back. And Mickey Glenn ends up with it. Glenn, near side to Fratz. Fratz looking for options, finds Kukul. Kukul drives the lane, sends the layup up, and the rebound comes to Mercyhurst. And another good rebound by Mercyhurst off of the miss from California. So now Clocker has it once again, sends it cross court, tried to go underneath the bell, but once again taken away by California. There's those steals we were mentioning before, Anthony. That's right. And well, it would have been dangerous if uh, Jessica Bell got that ball. She was wide open right underneath the net. Good job by California, though, being able to capitalize on that miss and get the ball back. So now Frotz with it, gives it to Mahati. Mahati tries to push Bell away, but sends it to Glenn first. Glenn for three, no good. Frotz with the rebound and the second chance good. 2 nothing Vulcans. Great job by Frotz being able to get that offensive rebound there to get those two points. 18-26 left to go in the first half. Penasino brings it up the court. She sends it over to Bell. Bell goes underneath the Penasino, wide open. Gives it back in the middle to Pia Jesse, and her layup goes up. It's tied at two. And Pia Jesse doing a great job on that one, being able to just drive into the net there, even though there was California defenders in her way. Mahati with it at the point. Looking for a lane. Jumper for two. In and out. No good. And there's going to be a foul on the rebound. Yeah, and that one was Lana Doran on the over the back there, trying to get the rebound. And that is Lana Doran's first foul of the game. That is the first foul of the game by any team at the 17.55 mark. So Penasino will bring it back up for the Lakers. Penasino sends it near side to Artis. Back out to Penasino. 15 on the shot clock. Penasino looking for a lane, but Kukul pressuring her very well. Frauds almost got that pass stolen away, but it ends up in the hands of Artis. Five seconds on the shot clock now. Artis spinning, tries to go for 
One of her teammates takes the jumper herself. No good. The rebound comes to California. And good job by California making Mercyhurst use the entire shot clock and then getting the rebound on the miss. Mickey Glenn resets the offense for the Balkans. We are tied at two with 17-12 left to go in the first half. Kukul with it now, drives down and gets fouled in the process. And the clock will stop with 17.09. Yeah, and that was Kuko there on the charge. She got, it just dropped her shoulder and it, it looked like Mercerhurst had just had her feet set on that one. So that is the second foul against California on the game. Penasino will bring it up for the Lakers. Mariah Penasino sends it near side to Artis. Alex Artis looking for a lane. Sends it underneath. Sends it underneath to Pia Jesse, and that's good. It's 4-2 Lakers. And there you go. Pia Jesse right there at the low post, being able to take that pass and get it right in that. She's doing so well as we thought she would today. Frotz has it now. Tries to go down low, but the shot is not going to count. She's guilty of a travel. Yeah. She, when she was going with the shot there, she kind of stopped and then went up again, and that's, that's a travel. Good effort, though. Good effort. Yeah, good effort by Frost to find the lane, but just was guilty of moving her feet a little too soon. So now Penasino will bring it back up for the Lakers. She sends it over to the far side. Dribbles back to Clocker. Clocker trying to drive down the paint, but goes outside to Bell instead. Bell, jumper. That's no good. The rebound comes to California. Here comes Mickey Glenn up the far side. Glenn finds Frost. Frost jumper for three. Off the back of the rim, and the ball goes out of bounds. It's Mercyhurst possession. And that one looked like it went off of uh, Lana Doran there, trying to get the rebound, just accidentally knocked it out of bounds. 16 minutes left to go in the first half. 4-2, the Lakers lead the Vulcans. Penasino sends it far side to Clocker. We have not seen any substitutions yet by either team in this game. Clocker has it, sends it cross court back to Penasino, now underneath to Artis. Artis in the corner, gives it back to Penasino. And Kukul with another pass taken away. Man, good job by Kukul being able to read the pass and get the steal. Glenn has it over on the far side. Glenn, back to the point, sends it underneath to Mahati, but she can't control the pass. Penasino ends up with it. Here she comes up the court with Bell. Bell sends it back outside to Clocker for three. That's no good. The rebound comes to Alana Doran. Frotz with it now on the near side. Looking for a lane, but sends it back out to Glenn instead. Mickey Glenn with the ball now. Gives it in the middle to Mahadi. Mahadi jumper from the free throw line. That goes through. It's tied at four. Yeah, good job, Mahadi there. Being able to know that she should shoot that ball right there at the free throw line. Nobody really on her there. Takes a shot, and it was a great shot. Nothing but net. Panasino will bring it back up for the Lakers. Down in the middle to Pia Jesse. Back to Panasino. Goes up, tries to go underneath the bell, but the Vulcans once again get the pass after it goes off to the side. And Kukul with it now. Gives it back to Glenn, and Glenn will reset the offense, directing traffic. Frotz with it now. We're tied at four. Frotz looking to give California the lead, and she does. It is six to four. And good job, Frotz there, being able to take on both Clocker and Pia Jesse there to drive to the, to the rim and get the two points. So Penasino will bring it up for the Lakers. Mariah Penasino gives it over on the far side to Pia Jesse. Pia Jesse to Artis, her jumper comes in the hands of California and Kuko falls to the ground with it. There's going to be a foul on the court. And yeah, good job by Kuko jumping up to get that rebound there. And that one's going to be on number 22, Artis for Mercyhurst. And that is Mercyhurst's first team foul of the game. So we've reached our first media pause. So let's take a look at some highlights. And there you go, Caitlin Frodge doing. Uh, our player to watch, great job, two points there. And Pia Jesse, our another player to watch, getting the two points there. And Pia Jesse, again, she's leading the team right now. She has the whole team on her shoulders right now. And Caitlin Frotz, here we go again. Get the jumper and another great shot by Caitlin Frotz. She takes on two Mercier's players on that one and another great shot and falls right in. Good job by our two players to watch today. 
And taking a quick look at the PSAC West standings, California only trailing IUP. IUP with that commanding 17 and 1 record in first place. But California not but California not far behind them at 15 and 3. And Mercyhurst, you see below Pitt Johnstown there with a 5 and 9 PSAC record and an 8 and 12 uh, overall record. And speaking of IUP's 17 and 1 record, who was that only loss to Anthony? California. California. That's so right. that's the that so one difference maker right now. The rematch is going to be next Wednesday on the road. So we'll be having definitely be having coverage for that one here on CUTV Sports. And now the teams are ready to take the court once again. 1352 left to go in the first half. And California will be inbounding it after the the foul against Mercyhurst. Six to four, California leads. Glenn sends it in the middle to Kukul. Kukul tries to drive the paint, but sends it back out to Mahadi instead. And Mahadi, little jumpy on her feet, gets called for a travel. Yeah, Mahadi there did a little shuffle on her feet, trying to figure out what, whether she wanted to drive or pass the ball there. Got called for the travel. So Hannah Senti is one of the check-ins, the substitutions for Mercyhurst. She brings it up over on the far side. Keeping it for herself, goes near side. The jumper for three is no good by Artis. The rebound goes out of bounds after a foul is called on the floor. And that one's going to go on number 11, Caitlin Frotz on that one. I guess they're going to call that one in over the back, and you'll see right there. I, I guess she got her hand right in her face, so they called her on the foul. And uh, the, it looks like the hip got in the body on that one from Caitlin Frotz, and that's why the uh, ref called that foul. So on the inbound, Mickey Glenn gets the steal and takes it back up for the Vulcan. So it's as if the foul never got called. But now we have California with it. And it's Doran over on the far side trying to go underneath. Gives it back out to Frotz. Frotz jumper for two. That's off the left side. No good. The rebound comes to Mercyhurst. Clocker will bring it back up. Adrian Clocker sent over on the far side. Glenn forces the jump ball. And it's going to be Mercyhurst possession still. And Glenn doing a great job being able to get her hands in there. And you'll see right there, she gets her hands on that ball, made it so that they have to call a jump ball. Now there's another jump ball. It's going to be California ball. Angela Heinz checks into the game for Mercyhurst. As we see Mercyhurst inbounding it, being pressured. Heinz ends up with it. And she gives it back to Senti. 12.45 left to go in the first half. Pressure by Sierra Barrett. Senti looking for some options. Nine on the shot clock. Tries to drive it down herself, but gives it back to Heinz. Three on the shot clock. They throw it up just in time, but it goes off the backboard, so it's a shot clock violation, and they are going to blow the whistle yet. Did not hit the rim, so it wasn't a legal rebound for California. Uh, it'll be Cal's ball, but uh, Sierra Barrett there was really trying to look for a wide open shot there, but had the clear breakaway, <laughs> yeah. but the referee was a little delayed with the whistle. And it looks like they actually called a shooting foul against California there. Uh, that'd be number five, Sierra Barrett on the foul. First free throw for Natalie Piagesi is up and good. Piagesi on the season, an 83% free throw shooter. Second shot up off the back of the rim. Barrett gets the, re Barrett gets the rebound this time. And, and gives it over to Mickey Glenn to bring it back up. And Sierra Barrett had a great jump on that rebound. Glenn will reset the offense. She gives it to Frotz. Frotz over to Glenn. Back to Frotz. Fakes. Gives it back to Glenn. 10 on the shot clock. Frotz with it. Underneath to Mahadi. Mahadi around the defense. Layup in and good. It is 8 to 5. Great job, Mahadi there. Recognized the lane to shoot instead of passing it. Great shot by Emma Mahadi on that one. So Heinz has it. Goes over far side to Clocker. Under 12 minutes left to go in the half. California with another stolen pass. Here comes Mahadi. Lead pass for Frotz. Frotz jumper for two. And there's a foul on the court. Looks like she might have drawn one. Yeah, it's going to go against Alex Ortiz on that one. And got her after the shot uh, was up. So there's 11 minutes and 45 seconds left to go in the first half. The score is 8-5 to five in favor of California. More of the first half next here on CUTV. 
With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10-year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. California with a strong start here at the MAC against Mercyhurst, eight to five. They are on top on the scoreboard. Yeah, and California doing a great job on the rebounds and on the steals. They're able to read the passes. California already with five steals in the game. Mercyhurst with one. There's 11 minutes and 45 seconds left to go in the first half. We see Caitlin Frutz go to the free throw line after the fourth team foul was called against Mercyhurst. Frutz first. Foul shot is up and good. It is now 9-5. to five. Frotts on the season, about an 82% free throw shooter. Second shot up. Second shot swish in and good. It is 10-5. So now California going with a press defense here as Sentia is being pressured by Frotts. Frotts trying to go for that, and now we have a whistle. There is going to be a foul away from the ball as the clock stops with 11.38 left to go. And it looks like the officials are discussing the, uh, the call here. Actually, Anthony, I do believe the shot clock never started huh? whenever they inbounded the ball, so that probably was what they noticed, and they had to pause play to make sure that it, to, that it worked. But yeah, it still reads 30 seconds. I didn't even notice that. I thought there was a foul on uh, Frotz as she was being pressured, or she was pressuring Sentia, but... I guess they're making sure that it's still going to work. They might take some time off. They might not. I'm not sure what they might do here. The ball was inbounded for about maybe four seconds. Yeah, I, yeah and the they shot take, clock is now at 23 instead of 30. Yeah, they take, they take seven seconds off. So, so Mercyhurst will be inbounding once again. With a successful inbound, Heinz gives it to Bell. Now back out to Sentia. 11 and a half left to go in the first half. Sentia, far side, going back to the point, goes down low, and the ball goes out of bounds off of, off of California, though, so it's going to maintain, or Mercyhurst is going to maintain possession. Yeah, it looked like, it, uh, from my vantage point, it looked like it actually went off of Mercyhurst, but the official right there was able to see that it went off of California's leg. So now the ball is inbounded to Heinz. Heinz almost had it stolen away by Mickey Glenn, and Barrett comes up with it. Frotz wide open, way down the other end. Layup in and good. It is 12 to 5. And California there did another great job being able to read those passes, getting in, get in the way. They weren't able to do it the first three times, but they were able to do it the fourth time and had Frotz wide open on the easy layup. So Heinz has it. She gives it to Sentia. <coughs> Sentia near midcourt with it, going over to the far side, but gives it back in the middle to Clocker. Nine on the shot clock. Clocker tries to go down low, but the ball gets kicked back into Mercyhurst's hands. Three on the shot clock. Jumper for two is good by Sentia. It is 12 to seven. And Sentia there was uh, just wide open on that two. Barrett looked like might have had a wide open chance at a layup, but she sends it back out instead. And now the jumper by Kuko is good for three. It is 15 to seven. And Kuko was wide open left wide open on the three-point shot, and she nailed it home, nothing but net. Heinz has it, goes underneath to Pia Jesse. That layup is in and good, it is 15 to nine. And that's one thing if you're California you don't want to do, you don't want to leave Pia Jesse wide open on that low post. Kuko with it again, the shot is not going to count. There was a foul on the floor. And that one's gonna be against Lana Doran on that one, and they said Mercerius wasn't going up to shoot it. Oh, my, my, I'm sorry. Pia Jesse, both were number 12. Pia Jesse was the foul. California ball. 
So Frotz has it now on the near side. 10 minutes left to go in the half. Glenn over in the corner, telling her offense to come out and help, and she does. There's Kukul, sends it over on far side to Mahadi. Mahadi trying to drive down the paint, takes the jumper for two, off the back of the rim, no good. Barrett with the rebound, sends it up, and that one comes to Penasino. And Barrett, another great rebound there, was able to jump over the Mercyhurst uh, defenders on that one. So Pia Jesse with it, sends it over far side to Heights. Heinz tries to go down low, but Frotz right there to steal the pass away, and here come the Vulcans. Frotz keeping it for herself. Layup in and good. It is 17-9. And Frotz on that one just speeding down the court, full throttle, and was able to just drive to the net and get the two points. Great job by Caitlin Frotz. So Mariah Penasino will bring it up for the Lakers. Goes in the middle to, to Pia Jesse. But she gives it back to Penasino. Now Heinz with it, looking for a lane, finds it, layup in and good. It is 17 to 11. Uh, great job by Angela, Angela Heinz on that one, being able to get those two points for Mercyhurst. Kukul with the ball now, jumper for three. Off the front of the rim, no good. The rebound, pinballs going towards out of bounds, but Mercyhurst with it. That's Adrian Clocker. Clocker brings it up the court for the Lakers. Near side. Goes to Pia Jesse, now over to Heinz. Eight and a half left to go in the first half. Goes down low to Pia Jesse, and her shot is good. It is 17 to 13. And Pia Jesse, just another great shot, being able to shoot over the California defenders on that one. Mickey Glenn brings it back up for the Vulcans. Barrett trying to go in with a pick, and there's going to be a foul on the floor. And that one's going to be against Angela Heinz on that one. Got her a little bit for the hand check on that one as she was trying to defend uh, Caitlin Frotz on that one. So both teams now have four team fouls total in this half. Barrett gives it to Glenn. Glenn forcing off the defender, sends the layup through. It's 19 to 13. And that was a great assist by Sierra Barrett on that one. So now here comes Clocker. Clocker will give it to Bell. At the point, back to Penasino. Under eight minutes left to go in the half. Pia Jesse trying to go for the shot, but gets fouled in the process. Yeah, Sierra Barrett was out, of, was out of position on that one, so she had to try to block the shot from behind him, which caused her to foul on that one. And that is going to be California's fifth team foul with 7.51 left to go in the first half. California still on top, though, 19-13. to Let's take a look at some highlights. And Emma Mahadi right there doing a great job. And Kaitlyn Frotz wide open on that one. That was from uh, when they had a great steal. And Santillo on that one for Mercyhurst, great shot. And Arena Cuco from three, wide open. And Pia Jesse doing a great job. And Caitlin Frotz fading away on that shot, getting the shot away. Great job by Caitlin Frotz today. Angela Hines driving to the net on that one, doing a great job. Both teams playing hard today. Great basketball game today, Cody. Yeah, and Angela Hines is a, another player that uh, – needs to be reckoned with along with Pia Jesse like we mentioned in our open. She was the team leader in scoring uh, last week against Ursuline College. So now let's take a look at the team leaders for California. And Emma Mahadi with the scoring and rebounding and Mickey Glenn doing a great job throughout her uh, season this year. Assist, steals, and she's leading the team in minutes today. Just a great all-around player. Mickey Glenn last year as a freshman, people were calling her the freshman phenom because she could do it all. She could do it all. Now let's take a look at the team leaders for Mercyhurst. And our player to watch, Pia Jesse, with the scoring, rebounding, and steals, and uh, Adrian Clocker with the assists and minutes. Yeah, it, Clocker's always on the court, always a force to be reckoned with. So Mercyhurst is full of uh, secret weapons off of their bench, definitely. So now we're seeing Natalie Pia Jesse at the free throw line. Pia Jesse misses the first one. It's still 19 to 13. Second shot up, second shot good. It is now 19 to 14. So Mickey Glenn will bring it back up for the Balkans. Kukul with it now. Quickly trying to pressure. But Frotz ends up with it. Frotz's jumper, and that is good. It's good for three. It's 22 to 14. And Frotz was way downtown on that shot. Nothing but net on that shot. She did that against Slippery Rock uh, on Saturday. She was amazing from the three-point line against Slippery Rock. 
Panasino gives it to Clocker. Clocker trying to drive the paint. Fakes away, but the shot's no good, and the rebound comes to California. Mickey Glenn brings it up for the Vulcans. Frotz with it now. Gives it to Kukul. Kukul drives down the post. In and good. It is 24 to 24-14. And an Arena Kukul on that one just driving right through the Mercyhurst defenders, just heaving up the shot, hoping it goes in. Not, not a conventional shot, but it went in and gets the two points for California. So Pia Jesse has it now. Gives it to Penasino, being pressured by Mahati. Penasino on over to Heinz. Heinz looking for a lane. Tries to go underneath, but there's a whistle. Looks like there might be a foul away from the ball against Mercyhurst, so California will get possession. Yeah, and uh, there was no foul on that one, but uh, the refs called something to give California the ball. It was the three-second rule. Three-second rule. That's what it was, just received clarification. So the three-second rule called against Mercyhurst, and that will give California possession. Kukul underneath, gives it to Mahadi. Now back to Kukul. Kukul's shot gets blocked, but she gets her own rebound, or Doran gets it, I beg your pardon. But her shot is rebounded by Mercyhurst. Penasino brings it back up for the Lakers. Takes the shot herself off the right side, no good. She gets her own rebound, and that one goes through. It's 24 to 16. And California just couldn't control the rebound on that one. They got hands on it, but was, weren't able to control it. And Penasino got her own rebound and was able to get the two points. Six minutes on the clock. Frotz tries to go underneath to Kukul. Pass gets tipped, but she's able to control it. Kukul looking for an option, goes over to Mahadi. Mahadi gets fouled on the shot. And that one is going to be going against Pia Jesse on that uh, on that shot by Emma Mahadi. And you'll see there, Pia Jesse just gets her on the hand on that one, giving Emma Mahadi the two shot free throws. So that first shot is in and good. That's Mercyhurst's first, I mean, I beg your pardon, fifth team foul of the game. And we're seeing a substitution check in now for Mercyhurst. Kelly McBroom checks into the game. California leading by nine. Mahadi on the season, an 83% free throw shooter. Second shot is no good, and the rebound comes to Mercyhurst. Mariah Penasino brings it up. Penasino finds a lane. Going to try to send it over to the far side, but it goes out of bounds in the process. Yeah, Kaylin Frodge couldn't steal that pass all the way cleanly, and it just went off her hands out of bounds. So Mercyhurst will be inbounding it from underneath their own basket. Looking for some options, Penasino tries to go in the middle, but it gets taken away by Mickey, or uh, not Mickey Glenn, I beg your pardon, Arena Kukul. Mickey Glenn brings it up for the Balkans, though. Kukul over to Mahadi. Caitlin Frotz with it now, gives it back to Kukul. Kukul jumper for three, off the front of the rim, no good. Goes for her own rebound. Now there's a double dribble call against California. Uh, great hustle by Arena Kuko, missing the, uh, the three-point shot, but hustling to get her own rebound. 5-17 left to go in the first half. California still leading by nine. Panasino will bring it up for the Lakers. She goes near side to McBroom. McBroom gives it back to Panasino. Now on over to Heinz. Heinz goes down low to McBroom. And there's a travel call against Mercyhurst. California will get possession. And Mercyhurst just shuffling their feet, giving California another opportunity on offense. Mickey Glenn brings it up for the Vulcans. Glenn over on the far side to Frotz. Frotz to Mahadi up down in the corner. Cross court to Glenn. Glenn's jumper for three goes through. It is 28 to 16. And great shot by Mickey Glenn on that three point shot. She was guarded by Mercyhurst defenders. And that was another, another great half, uh, not half court, but it was a uh, great pass across the court. So now Clocker has it for the Lakers. She takes a jumper that goes off the back of the rim, rebounded by Mahadi. She'll give it to Mickey Glenn. Glenn will bring it up. Resetting the offense. Near side to Kukul. Kukul keeping it for herself. Draws a foul. And it's going to be called against Adrian Clocker. And looks like it was, she was going up on that one. So Kate, uh, 
Arena Kuko is going to be getting two shots on that one. So the clock is stopped with 4.06. We're seeing Arena Kukul step to the free throw line. That is Mercyhurst's sixth team foul of the game, and the first shot goes through. California's lead is now 29 to 16. We're seeing Katie Fisher check into the game for Adrian Clocker. I'm not sure if California has had a single substitution yet, but I could be incorrect. Second shot is up and good. It's now 30 to 16. Now we're seeing a substitution come in for California. Yeah, Sierra Barrett came in earlier. That was during the media timeout that she checked in. So nothing during play until just now. CeCe Dixon checks into the game now for the Vulcans. We have under four minutes left to go in the half. Penasino gives it to Fisher. Katie Fisher being double teamed, going for a trap, and it pays off. D Dixon with the intercepted pass, gives it over to Mahadi. Mahadi down, back to Dixon again. Dixon's jumper for two off the left side, no good. The rebound comes to Mercyhurst. Mercyhurst playing with speed now. Panasino has it. Panasino looking for a lane. Goes near side, hands it off to Fisher. Fisher takes the jumper, that's no good. The rebound comes to Frotz. And great rebound by Frotz being able to get there and cover the ball after she gets the rebound. So Frost is going to back up and give it over to Glenn. Glenn to Mahadi, swinging it around down low, and Dixon is going to be guilty of a travel. So it is now 30 to 16 in favor of the Vulcans, with 3:09 left to go in the half. The conclusion of the first half is next here on CU TV. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10-year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. Vulcans with a 30-16 lead over the hometown Mercyhurst Lakers here with 3.09 left to go in the first half. And California doing a great job stealing the ball away when Mercyhurst is trying to pass it. So Mercyhurst has 16 fouls, California with five. Three minutes left to go in the half. Penasino gives it over far side, now it comes back. Penasino being double teamed again, but that leaves Katie Fisher wide open, who goes down near side, but the ball goes out of bounds. And that's another turnover for Mercyhurst. They had 12 before this media timeout. That makes it 13 turnovers, whereas Cal has only had six so far. Now Mickey Glenn will bring it up. Glenn over on the far side to Frotz. Frotz thought about taking a jumper, but gives it to Doran. Doran to Mahadi. Mahadi's jumper for three. Air ball, missed everything. And the second shot missed everything, but the rebound comes to Mercyhurst. So Mariah Penasino with it, gets it to Bell. Bell back to Penasino. Now on the near side to Fisher. Fisher goes down low, but the ball goes out of bounds. Yeah, Mahadi just got in the way of that. Uh, looked like she was gonna go for a shot there. Mahadi got in the way and was able to corral it out of bounds. There's 2.18 left to go in the half. Fisher with it. Goes over far side to Heinz. Now back to Fisher. Fisher on the near side, looking for a lane. Cuts to the free throw line. Down low for Penasino. That shot gets rebounded by Mercyhurst. Bell sends it back out to Heinz. Heinz jumpers, no good. Rebound comes to Mercyhurst. It ends up in Bell's hands. And yeah, Mercyhurst yeah. doing a great job being able to get those offensive rebounds this time. Offensive rebounds are deadly. 
So Penasino with it now over on the far side. Sends it cross court to Heinz. Heinz trying to shake Mahati off, but gives it to Fisher instead. Fisher pushes down Mickey Glenn. Nothing called, and Frotz gets the rebound either way. So now here comes Frotz. Frotz tries to go down low, but it comes back out instead. Doran with it. Doran gives it back to Glenn. Glenn over on the far side to Mahadi. Mahadi to Frotz. Frotz jumper for three. Off the back, no good. Rebound comes to Penasino. Penasino tries to go down to Katie Fisher. She has it on the near side. One minute left to go in the first half of play. Katie Fisher with it. Trying to shake off the defense, but being pressured well by Glenn. And now here comes, here come the Lakers trying to go down low, but it comes back out to Fisher. And Glenn with another steal, gives it to Frotz. Here she comes, one on two if she hurries. Frotz's layup is going through. It's 32 to 16. Great shot by Frotz on that one. Able to get the one-handed layup and off balance too on that one. It was able to kiss it off the backboard in the net. And Glenn almost had another stolen pass, but the ball goes out of bounds off of her hands, obviously. And the official's gonna put some more time on the clock as the clock did not stop right when the whistle was blown. Yeah, the clock is stopped here with 25.2 seconds, but a timeout is called by Mercyhurst here now. They do put two more seconds back on the clock, so it stops with 27 seconds now, but a timeout called by Mercyhurst. And the score 32 to 16 in favor of California. And looking at the season so far, Mercyhurst's record when they're losing at halftime is 0 for 7. That's, a, that's definitely going to be a thorn in their side, but it can easily change. A, a motto I like to always say is there's a first time for everything. So California can't get too comfortable if they do go into the locker room at halftime with the, uh, with the lead. And here in the stats racking, California is fourth in scoring in the PSAC, whereas Mercyhurst is 10th. California is fifth in scoring defense, uh, and Mercyhurst 14th in the scoring margin, fourth and 14th. Yeah, so California definitely has the upper hand in both of those categories, but no team can get too comfortable here in the PSAC. Crazier things have happened as Katie Fisher takes a jumper for three right out, right out of the timeout, makes it 32 to 19. And great shot by Katie Fisher. She had a little room to shoot that three-point shot, and she did a great job. So now Mahadi over on the far side with it, goes to Glenn. Mickey Glenn gives it to Doran, now over to Mahadi. Five seconds to go on the game clock, takes the jumper for three, off the back of the rim, no good. Barrett tries to get the rebound, but it goes out of bounds. It's actually not Barrett, I beg your pardon. That is uh, Precious Martin that checked into the game. But the clock stops with less than a second. Mahadi takes the last second shot, but it's to no avail. It is no good. So Mercyhurst goes into their locker room on the losing end of the scoreboard here so far, 32 to 19. And California doing a great job today, being able to get the rebounds and the steals and converting them into points today. And that's the story at halftime this, uh, so far. After 20 minutes of play, California 32, Mercyhurst 19. Second half action next here on CUTV. NCAA Division II has much to cheer about. As nearly 100,000 student athletes compete with passion and pride. And I'm pleased to share the best news of all. Student athletes are outperforming the rest of the D2 student body in graduation rates. Just another reason why you'll hear us say with pride, I chose Division II. Learn more at D2SA.org. With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. 
32 to 19 the score. California on top over Mercyhurst Lakers here at the MAC at Mercyhurst University. If you're just joining us, my name is Cody Jeanette. Joining me today is Anthony D'Agostino. Let's take a look at our halftime stats as the second half is about to begin. And you know, field goal is 12 for 30, 40 percent. 8 for 20, 40 percent. Both teams have 40 percent field goals right now, but California has a commanding lead of 32 to 19. Rebounds. Mercyhurst is actually out rebounding California 17 to 15. And I think it was when Mercyhurst had that little run there where they were just shooting the basket at the, at, at the hoop and they were able to get those rebounds. Turnovers, however, Mercyhurst has 14 turnovers and California has six. And you know, when I back at home I do filming for girls basketball over there, and when I talk to the coach, he says all the time, turnovers lose games. And especially if you have 14 at the start of the half. Not, not a good sign uh, for the second half. Hopefully they can look at that and adjust how they're playing. Steals, California, as we talked about on the tail of the tape, nine steals. And you know, when you get a chance to break up passes and drive down the court and be able to score on them, you know, it just shows you have a really great uh, defensive team. Yeah, Mickey Glenn and Arena Kukul, among others, being very aggressive in those passing lanes. But right now, Anthony, let's take a look at how our score became 32 to 19. And Caitlin Frotz has been a beast on the court again tonight. There you see her with another two point shot. And here she is all alone on the breakaway, getting another two points. And here, uh, that's uh, Santia for Mercyhurst getting the two points. Angela Hines doing a good job there, driving to the net. And now when Pia Jesse, just on the jumper there, able to go over Mahati's head. And that was just a great feed over to uh, Mickey Glenn on that one, right through the defenders. And great three-point shot by Mercyhurst on that one. And that is how you have the score, 32 to 19. 32 to 19, California with the lead. And it will be California's possession to start the second half. And like the rule states, at the beginning of the following half of play, the teams will switch hoops that they are shooting at. So California will be shooting from right to left on your TV screen this time. And Mercyhurst will be shooting from left to right. Mickey Glenn will bring it up for the Balkans as the second half is underway. Glenn aggressively gives it to Mahati. Her shot is good, 34 to 19. And great patience by Mahati, just waiting on the low post for that feed by Glenn. Now Clocker with it, over on the near side. Gives it over to Penasino. Penasino back to Clocker. Clocker looking for a lane, thought about it, but gives it back to Penasino. Nine on the shot clock. Being pressured by Glenn. Penasino looks for a shot off the back of the backboard. The rebound comes to the rebound comes to Mercyhurst, but the ball never hit the rim. The shot clock was mistakenly reset. So the shot clock violation is called. And California, they're able to get that ball back off a shot clock violation there by uh, Mercyhurst. So another turnover for Mercyhurst. That's number 15 for them on the game. Mickey Glenn will bring it up for the Vulcans. Glenn. Near side to Frotz. Jumper for three is good. It's 37 to 19. And Frotz doing another great job on the three point line there, getting nothing but net on the far corner. So now, underneath, Mercyhurst gives it back out to Clocker. Clocker driving down the paint, sends the shot up, tries to draw the foul, but doesn't get anything called, and the rebound comes to Mickey Glenn. Glenn will bring it up for the Vulcans. Over to Kukul. Kukul drives the paint, goes down. The shot is no good. The rebound comes to Mercyhurst. Penasino can't control the pass, and the ball goes out of bounds off of her fingers. It will be California's possession. And it looked like uh, that one was Natalie Pia Jesse on that one <laughs> passing in the ball, and it was passing it to where Penasino was, not where she was going, which caused the ball to go out of bounds and give California another chance on offense. So now Kukul has it. Kukul. Gives it to Mahati. Mahani back to Kukul. Kukul's jumper off the rim, no good. The rebound comes to Bell. And Alex Ortiz on that one doing a great job being able to just keep her body steady and block, block the shot with her body up basically on that one. Mariah Penasino has control of it. Gives it to Bell. 
Bell goes underneath to Piacesi. Now back out to Penasino. Her jumper for three goes through. It's 37 to 22. And Penasino right there, great job on the three-point shot. She's only She was only 10% from the uh, three-point line. She made that one there. So now a pass intended for P. Jesse, it looked like, goes flying out of bounds over on the far corner. Or not intended for P. Jesse, I beg your pardon, that was California's possession, but Mercyhurst gets the inbound. P. Jesse scrambled it up, so now here's Penasino. Over to Artis. Alex Artis looking for a lane, but being pressured very well by Kukul. Gives it to Clocker. Clocker drives down the paint, but cuts back out to Artis. Artis thought about it, but gives it to Clocker instead. And there's going to be a foul called as the shot clock was winding down. And Clocker on the foul there, just pushes off with her forearm, and you're gonna see it right there. She pushes Frotz in the, in the abdomen with her forearm. So Frotz draws the first foul of the second half, and it belongs to Mercyhurst. Glenn will bring it up for the Vulcans, resetting the offense. Glenn over on the far side to Doran. Doran back to Glenn in the corner. Mahadi, relay to Kukul, goes out of bounds. And it's going to be Mercyhurst possession. And Kukul just couldn't, couldn't get that pass there. Mercyhurst now with the ball. 17 minutes left to go in the first half. Penasino will bring it up for the Lakers. Penasino over to Clocker. Clocker, jumper from the free throw line off the back of the rim. And it goes out of bounds, and it is going to be California's possession. And on those rebounds, nobody was able to <laughs> grab the ball completely and just glanced off of uh, Alex Artis's uh, arm there. California ball. So now here's Glenn bringing it up for the Vulcans. She goes near side, goes in the middle to Mahadi. Mahadi to Glenn, now over to Frotz, underneath to Kukul. Back out to Mahadi, her jumper for two. In and out, no good. The rebound comes to Mercyhurst. Penasino brings it up for the Vulcans. Gives it to Clocker. Clocker, near side to Bell. Bell has it, looking for a lane on the baseline, but the pass gets taken away, intended for Pia Jesse. Here comes Mahadi with Frotz. Mahadi spins around, layup in and good. It's 39 to 22. Hey, what a spin move by Emma Mahadi on that one to get around the, defend, the defenders on that one. Under 16 minutes left to go in the half, and the ball goes out of bounds. 15-59, the clock stops. California still with the lead, 39 to 22. We are going to have a pause and play. Now, Anthony, I know where you're from is more out of the uh, CUTV's broadcasting range, <laughs> but there's an easy way to get around that. If you want to go on to YouTube, go to youtube.com slash CUTV Sports 1. You can see the, uh, the full games as well as highlight packages of uh, previous sports shoots that CUTV has done. Yeah, and when I'm back at the station, either you know just hanging out or chilling out or doing work, I look, like to go onto the YouTube CUTV page just to watch some of the games that have happened. Maybe I couldn't go to them or whatever, but it's a great place to go and watch videos and other uh, sports. And there's also a news center channel that you can go on to, youtube.com slash CUTV News Center. So now let's take a look at some highlights by an a dominant performance by California early on. Yeah, Emma Mahadi with that first one, and then M Mariah Penasino on that one doing a great job with the three-point shot. Emma Mahadi again doing a good job getting that spin around to get the uh, two points. So the score remains 39-22 to 22 in favor of California. 15-59 on the clock. Mercyhurst going to inbound the ball. It's going to be Adrian Clocker. Clocker with it being pressured by Doran, but she finds Pia Jesse. Pia and Jesse, the shot is not going to count as there was a foul called. And that one's going to be going against Mickey Glenn on that one. Got her with the block. So now we're seeing Angela Heinz check into the game for Mariah Penasino. 15.57 on the clock. Mercyhurst will inbound from underneath their own basket. Here's Heinz with it. Heinz gets bumped by Mahadi, tries to control the pass, and somehow ends up, somehow ends up to Pia Jesse, but her shot is no good. The rebound comes to Mahadi. And Pia Jesse just couldn't capitalize on that. She was right there for the shot, just couldn't get it to go in. So now Glenn with control. Glenn force, tries to force a lane, but goes underneath to Mahadi. Her jumper's no good, the rebound. 
is going to be a jump ball, and it's going to be Mercyhurst possession. Yeah, and both teams getting up to get the rebound. Great job by both teams getting uh, both hands on the ball. It's going to be Mercyhurst's ball, but if that's another jump ball, it's going to be California's. So now here comes Adrian Clocker. Gives it to Angela Heinz. Heinz hands it off to Artis. Artis with it being pressured by Doran, but gives it to Clocker. Clocker driving down the post. Shot gets blocked by Doran. Rebound comes to Artis. She controls it. Eight on the shot clock now. Tries to go underneath to Clocker. Now back to Pia Jesse. Pia Jesse shot off the rim, no good. Rebound comes to Clocker, and she controls it. Clocker over on the corner. Tries to go for another shot, but there's going to be a whistle. And Clocker got fouled on that one, and it's going to be going against Lana Doran on that one. And, and she just hit her on the arm there when she was going up, so it's going to be Adrian Clocker shooting two. Clocker's first shot is in and good. Clocker on the season just above 83% in the free throw department. Makes the score 39 to 23. And it's now 39 to 24. Both free throws were good. Mickey Glenn brings it back up for the Vulcans. Glenn finds a lane, but goes in the corner to Mahati. Her jumper for two is good. It is 41 to 24. And great job by Mickey Gunn. Looking like she was going to shoot, but then drops it off to Mahati. And Mahati was able to get the shot away and get two points for the, off that one. Clocker has it. Goes far side to Heinz. Heinz down in the middle. Now back out to Ortiz. Now to Pia Jesse. Her jumper for two is rebounded by California. And Arena Kuko there just all alone there to get the rebound. Mickey Glenn has it, over to Kukul, over to Frotz. Swung down low. Here's a jumper, a little too much oomph on that <laughs> as it goes over the basket, and there was a whistle before the rebound could be rebounded. And that one's going to be against Sierra Baird there. And, and I guess she went over the back to try to get that rebound, and the official called her for it. And I beg your we pardon, that's actually going to be against Angela Heinz. Frotz's first shot is up and good, and now we have Barrett checking into the game for Arena Kukul. Frotz on the season is an 81% 80, free throw shooter. Shot is up and good. It is now 43-24. to 24. But California's lead is stretched out to 19. Clocker bobbles the pass, but... Is able to maintain control, and she resets the offense. Being pressured by Glenn, goes near side to Heinz. Heinz, from the post, it bounces around and goes through. It's 43 to 26. So now Mahadi on a quick relay pass tries to go for a layup of her own, but it gets rebounded by Mercyhurst. She didn't just she just didn't have enough height on that shot for it to uh, fall into the net. Clocker gets the pass. Taken away, Frotz all alone. Here she goes, and layup in and good. Frotz after getting the bobbled pass makes it 45 to 26. Emma Mahadi with a great job getting her hand out there to block and knock the ball away, and was able to pick the ball back up and get it right down to Caitlin Frotz who was wide open. Katie Fisher's ready to check into the game for Mercyhurst now. As Pia Jesse has it underneath, she gives it to Bell. Bell's layup takes a nasty spin out of the hoop. And it comes to Mickey Glenn. Glenn's jumper for three goes through. It's 48 to 26. And Mickey Glenn wide open on the three point shot there and she hammers it home and a timeout is gonna be called against Mercyhurst. So Mercyhurst takes another timeout with the clock pausing at 13 minutes and two seconds left to go in regulation. And Anthony, during this half, California has definitely had the upper hand. And there you see Mahadi taking the jumper for two, going over Alex Artis. And another shot just bouncing around and <laughs> ends up going in. Good luck, a lucky bounce for Cal. And another three-point shot there by Mickey Glenn on that one. Yeah, lots of, uh, lots of opportunities being capitalized by these Vulcans. And if you're a Facebooker, you can go on to Facebook and find California University Television. Just uh, go on and like the page. We uh, like to post some status updates on shoots that we're up to or maybe some upcoming shoots or upcoming special events that we might be hosting. You never know. And it's a good way for the fans as well as some of the alumni and current students to stay connected. 
And that's right. Facebook's a great tool to stay connected with CU TV and everything that we do, whether it's at the station or on sports shoots. So there's 13 minutes and two seconds left to go in the second half. California leading 48 to 26 over the home Mercyhurst Lakers. We're here at the MAC, the Mercyhurst Athletic Center in Erie, Pennsylvania, on the campus of Mercyhurst University. Mercyhurst will inbound the ball. Katie Fisher will inbound it to Angela Heinz. Heinz gives it right back to Katie Fisher, and she brings it back up after being substituted in. Fisher gives it near side to Artis. Artis down low to Bell. Bell back in the middle. Trying to spin and gets called for a travel as she shuffles her feet going down the post. Yeah, and just shuffles her feet on that one. And it's going to be another turnover against Mercyhurst, giving California another opportunity to score some points. Mickey Glenn brings it up for the Vulcans. Glenn fakes it out, keeps the ball herself, gives it to Mahati. Her layup is in and good. It is 50 to 26. And great job, Mickey Glenn driving to the net, then giving Mahati the no look pass for two. Katie Fisher brings it back up for the Lakers now. Fisher gives it to Heinz. Heinz being pressured by Frotz. On over far side, that's Fisher with it again. California playing some phenomenal defense here, er, her, here in this game as Fisher's shot goes in and good. It's 50 to 28. Now Frotz with a quick relay pass being received gives it to Barrett over on the far corner. Barrett gives it back to Glenn and she resets. Under 12 minutes left to go in the half. Frotz, far side. 10 on the shot clock, takes the jumper, doesn't hit anything, but she draws a foul. And Kaylin Frotz there going up for two and just, just clipped on the hand there. She's going to have a chance to get those two points back. Natalie P. Jesse is the guilty party on the foul. So with 11.50 left to go in the second half, your score, California 50, Mercyhurst 28. More second half action next here on CU TV. With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10-year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. with a strong second half start to get the lead, extend the lead to 50 to 28 over Mercyhurst here with 11.50 left to go in the half. And Caitlin Frotz doing a great job today. She was eight for 11 and Pia Jesse was four for seven. Both players, our players to watch are doing a phenomenal job today. Frotz's first free throw is up and good. The second one goes up and it is off the front of the rim, rebounded by Mercyhurst. So the score remains 51 to 28 in favor of California. Katie Fisher brings it up for the Lakers. Fisher cutting to the outside. Comes back to the point for Angela Heinz. Now underneath to Pia Jesse, and the ball goes off of her fingers and out of bounds, so it will be California's ball. And checking in for California is going to be Brittany Nelson. Brittany Nelson, the 5'10 forward. She's a junior out of Harrisburg. Checking into the game for the Vulcans. Glenn has it now. She gives it to Barrett. Barrett drives down the lane, sends the shot up, but it bounces off the rebound, gets her own rebound, and it goes through 53 to 28. Great job, Sierra Barrett, getting her own rebound uh, and just getting the shot away to get the two points. So now Katie Fisher has it for the Lakers. 
Fisher gives it to Heinz. Mickey Glenn almost with another steal as Heinz's three-point shot goes off the back of the rim, rebounded by Barrett. She gives it to Glenn, and here come the Vulcans. Glenn swerves, goes through, and the rebound goes in. That's Barrett on that shot. It's 55, 53, 55, I beg your pardon, to 28. And Sarah Barrett again on the rebound. She is amazing going up on the boards to get the shot. And a steal there by Mickey Glenn. Mickey Glenn with the steal. Gets the shot blocked and gets fouled on the rebound. So Glenn draws the foul after her first shot attempt gets blocked. But Glenn sniffing out that pass and pouncing on it. And that's the story all game. California with the steals there. And she gets fouled there by number five, Angela Heinz. That's her, that was her third foul of the game. Mercyhurst currently with four team fouls in the second half. Glenn, first shot up, first shot good. 56 to 28 the score. Glenn on the season an 84.3% free throw shooter. Glenn's second shot, ready to go. It is up and it goes through. 57 to 28 is now your score. Ball will be inbounded by Mercyhurst. California going with a press defense. Glenn has it, being pres pressuring Jessica Bell. Bell almost guilty of a travel, but gives it to Katie Fisher just in time. Fisher gives it to Artis. Artis tries to go down low. Fisher has it. Her layup is in and good. It is 57 to 30. And Mickey Glenn there trying to steal the pass there. It went over sh shooting it, and Artis with the two points. Mahadi has it over on the far side. Jumper for two, in and out, no good. The rebound comes to Artis, and here come the Lakers. Artis gives it to Fisher. Kelly McBroom's ready to check in for the Lakers. Down low to Pia Jesse, now back out to Fisher. Fisher's jumper for three, off the back of the rim, no good. The rebound comes to Barrett, and Barrett gives it to Mahadi, who brings it back up to court. Barrett with it again. Jumper, layup for two, and that goes through 59 to 30. Great job, Sierra Barrett, getting that pass in stride and going all the way for the layup for two. 9.15 left to go in the half. Angela Heinz with it. Gives it to Pia Jesse, and her layup, or her shot, I beg your pardon, is no good. The rebound comes to California. So Emma Mahadi has it now for the Vulcans. She gives it to Mickey Glenn. Nine minutes left. Glenn goes to Sierra Barrett. Barrett back to Mahadi. Underneath to Brittany Nelson. Nelson's jumper for two is no good. The rebound goes to the near corner where it's controlled by Doran. Now back out to Mahadi. Mahadi over on to Mickey Glenn. Glenn goes down low where the pass gets tipped out of bounds by Jessica Bell it looks like. So California will maintain possession. Kelly McBroom checking in for Natalie Piagesi. And Jessica Bell there doing a good job being able to block that pass to make it so that California couldn't uh, get that shot away. So now Emma Mahadi has it. Gives it to Glenn. Glenn's jumper for three. Off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound comes to Mercyhurst, but it goes out of bounds in the process. Yeah, Not sure who might be possessing it. It looks like it's still going to be California's ball. <laughs> and it looks like it will be California's ball. So the ball must have been tipped by Mercyhurst on the way out. California inbounds it from their own near corner. Nelson had it underneath, but but there's going to be a turnover against the Balkans. Looks like she might have been guilty of a travel. Yeah, she shuffled her feet on that one. So Katie Heckman is now ready to check into the game for the Lakers. Angela Heinz controls it now. Heinz goes far side to Fisher. Fisher trying to drive the lane, but there's a whistle, and there's going to be a foul called here. And that one's going against Sierra Barrett there with the hand check. And as you said, Katie Heckman is checking in for the Lakers today. So now Mercyhurst inbounding it from underneath their own basket. The inbound is stolen away by Sierra Barrett. One on two with Mahadi. Mahadi lost it, but gives it back to Barrett. Her layup takes an unfriendly bounce, gets her own rebound though, and that one goes through. It's 61 to 30. And Sierra Barrett 
just ceases to amaze me. Every time she touches that ball, she's able to get the rebound. She, she's playing out of her mind today. And Fisher gets those two points right back very quickly, 61 to 32. So Glenn brings it up for the Vulcans. She gives it to Barrett, who goes near side to Doran. Doran trying to attack, but gives it back to Barrett instead. Sierra Barrett tries to attack, but forces the jump ball, and it's going to be California's possession. So there's seven minutes and 26 seconds left to go in the second half. The teams go to the benches for the media timeout. Caitlin Frotz, Anthony, our player to watch, as we mentioned in the open, she's been a monster here during this game. Yeah, yes, she has. Right, right there, she was able to get the rebound and get the two points. Driving to the net here, going over two defenders against Mercyhurst and getting the two points. And there you see the wide open layup there. Doesn't miss on that one. And a fadeaway shot, able to kiss it off the backboard. Here she's going up against one person and able to again fade away and get the lucky bounce to go in to the net. And she's hot from the three-point line, and she did it there. And here's another wide open one she had. Just doesn't miss that one. Yeah, Frotz also being a uh, dominant presence on those steals and those takeaways. That's one thing that our highlights didn't really show. But that's the, definitely the offense that she generates. The uh, offensive opportunities don't come without generation like that. So if you want to visit uh, the newly revamped CalVulcans.com, I must say I... All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to sincerely apologize for the technical difficulty. The breaker that our uh, production truck was connected to uh, just kicked off mysteriously, but now we are back and um, just in time to give you the final score update. California with the victory in this one, 72 to 46. And California today playing really great defense and offense today. They were able to hold Mercyhurst to not get 50 points today in this game. They were to win 72 to 46. Great defensive stand by California. Stealing the ball, getting the, the offensive points then. For Anthony D'Agostino, our producer and director Gary Smith in our production truck and our entire crew on hand, we'd like to invite you to our next broadcast at Edinburgh University. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next time.